Hey folks, welcome to another video. Again, in the context of developing a NuGet package, this is the third one on that uh, subject. So the first one was setting up the build with Nuke. Then we made the build run in the cloud using GitHub Actions. And now we are going to take a look at versioning before we get to actually publishing the packages in some repository so we can install the, the package. To help uh, with the versioning things, we're going to use a little package that seems really helpful and simple to use, which is called Minver. So it will automatize a bunch of things for us, which will be great. Just before looking at how Minver works, let's just have a quick refresher of semantic versioning. Probably you already know that, but just to be sure, as we are going to follow this approach. So semantic versioning means that we'll have three parts, at least for the version, which is comprised of major, minor, and patch, where major means we are doing an, a breaking change. So for instance, we have a method that we delete, or maybe we add more parameters, so it's a breaking change. Then we have uh, a minor, which we increment when we add features, but don't make a breaking change. So maybe we add a method or something like that, and the clients keep working regardless of the, the version they target. They see the same behavior. And finally, we have patch, which is incremented when we do something that doesn't add features and doesn't break anything so maybe there's a bug fix or some internal change that does not affect in any way the clients additionally we can have some extensions so for instance sometimes you will see 1.0.0 dash beta so that's an extension to the the normal format but normally a major will be just like this 2.0.0 so minver follows this approach as well and most of the packages we see in .NET follow this approach so let's see so how does minver works let's go over here so let's see if minver uses uh, tags and other commit information to calculate what will be the version number so if the current commit has a version tag minver grabs that version tag and uses it as a version of our project. If the current commit does not have a version tag, it searches the commit history for the latest commit with a version tag. If a tag is found, if the tag is a pre-release, it is used as is with a height. So pre-release means that it's a, it has an extension like beta, alpha, something like that. If it's not a pre-release, so it's something like 1.1.1, then the patch number is incremented, but as it says here, it can be customized. So if we have 1.1.1, then we'll see 1.1.2. Uh, default pre-release identifiers are added. So in this case, it will use alpha, but we can configure this. And like I was saying, so it has alpha and adds this in the end and adds height which is the number of commits between where we are and where the the tag was added if no commit is found so it just defaults to this now let's see how to get minver in our project and then sync it in usage so just using visual studio code so we can add minver directly to the project or so in the cs project or in this case i'll put in the directly build props because i'm thinking maybe in the future i'm not sure but maybe i will add more projects here or maybe not i don't know but putting it here or in the cs project goes to the same so if we go here you can see I added the package here. So just referencing minver, same as usual, nothing new. Maybe the only thing worth mentioning is this private assets. 
because Minvar is a development time dependency. We don't care for the consumers of our library to reference Minvar. We just want to use it when building. Uh, this here is also for Minvar, but it's not relevant, so I'm not going even to mention it today. So that's it just by doing this. If we build, it will restore the package and Minvar will be working. Nothing else to do. So now let's see Minvar in action. I'm going to the terminal. So let me clear this here. If we do, let's use the things we developed in the past uh, videos. So let's use Nook. So let's call build PowerShell and call pack. So we can just build, but pack will give us a quick look at what it's doing and the, the version that was uh, created. So let's see, hope it's fast. Building, building, building. So I, I created no tags, anything. So this is the default. So as it mentioned, it generated a package with 000, zero, zero alpha zero and the height. So the height is four because that's the number of commits that we're here. So if I do git log, we see we're here on setup minver. Then we had the GitHub actions nuke and move code over. That's it. So this would be zero, one, two, three, four. So now let's put, let's add a tag. So git tag 0 0.1.0 0, just for it to, to see. And now let's run pack again. It's going and it's done. So now because the current commit has the, the tag, it just used it directly as it said in the in the docs. Now let's remove dot one zero. And now let's look at git log and let's grab this one and let's do git tag 0 0.1.0 .0 and paste that. So we'll tag the previous commit and we'll run pack again. Let's see how things go. So as it mentioned, when the tag is in the previous, it will show 0 0.1.1, .1, so it incremented the patch, and then adds the alpha and the height. So it's one commit after the other one. Let's again delete the tag. Let's go look at git log again. Now let's use this one. Git tag. We got 1.0 and publish again. So again, exactly the same behavior, 0 0.1.1 .1 incremented the patch, but now the height is 2 because I put the, the tag one commit further. So now let's delete that again. And let's, for instance, put, let's put the tag again, but instead of 0 0.1.0, .0, let's put alpha zero. And now let's build again. Okay, so now because it was already a pre-release, so it already had the alpha, then it didn't increment the patch, it just added the height. 
let's delete the tag again not found yet because i called it alpha zero nice so clear stuff so that's it all with the default this works well and i won't do any customization because mostly i don't think it's needed for at least for now this behavior is good enough for what i want from the for this package so i'll just keep it like that but maybe we can take a look at the options so for instance it says it can customize the patch number so pre-release phase preview ah, wrong thing so instead of the patch yeah it says auto increment but you can specify minor major so it auto increments the patch but we can auto increment something else we also can instead of using alpha we can use preview what else we can add a tag prefix but so for instance i used 0.1.0 .0, but i could have used v0.1.0 and in that case for minvert to know we could add this this element for it to know how to do stuff and yeah there's more customization options so be sure to come to the github repo and read it if you're interested otherwise like i said the defaults are pretty good and at least for my use case i think they're they're good enough so just one final thing before wrapping up going to the end so we saw things working with nook but one thing we also have is it running in github actions but github actions as it's mentioned here in the docs by default uses uh fetches when it clones the, the repository only takes the latest commit and that's a problem because minver goes through the the history of commits to take a look at the tags and calculate the heights and all of that so that might be a problem so we can do some configuration in this case github actions we can use zero so it will clone all the commits or we can put some number that we are sure that will be enough for our project so over here too long in the ci i did i put the zero uh good enough and the project has don't know if it will grow a lot but if it does we can then change this but it, it's important to do something otherwise it won't work because you minver would only locate the tags if they were in the last commit otherwise it wouldn't work and that's not cool and i think that's it you saw how things worked it's really simple to use and it's really useful instead of being uh, in all the cs proj files touching the versions and putting everything in sync we can use a library like this to do it so i think that's it uh in the future we'll be back, be back to this library do more stuff but for now that's it hope it was useful and hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you in the next one see yes